had great aspirations of being a performer of some sort. I had absolutely no training and uh, no guidance. And um, I fell into it as a uh, my best friend from high school married this guy and he was a guitarist and I used to just sing harmonies to him. And he was quite a hustler. So he met Artie Kornfeld, uh, who was one of the um, creators of the festival Woodstock. And so we just, um, you know, started working up this little group. And, and that's how I got started. So actually, in actual fact, I did fall into it. I wasn't uh, going out and, and auditioning professionally. Uh, I started really from the underground, from the, you know, just from hanging out. And uh, I I liked it very much. And then, uh, you know, I, I sort of wormed my way into it. So <laughs> there you go. How surprised were you when the music of Blondie really took off and hit it big? Did it shock you? Well, no. I, I mean, we, we actually worked for it. We put in the, we put in the time. We worked very hard. And uh, we were very determined. And uh, one thing that, you know, that Chris always says that I, I, I sort of agree with is that, you know, at, at some point in everyone's life, you know, when you're a teenager, you think of being a, a rock star. That's it. You know, it's like it's part of the culture. It's part of modern day culture. I think there was a time when all young guys wanted to be baseball players or or mm -hmm. soccer players or something like that. And they envision themselves as being great, you know, sportsmen and heroes and so on. As, um, as you know, as you get on in life, you have other priorities and you realize that, OK, well, maybe I'm not that person. And fortunately for me, um, my my vision, you know, became a reality. It certainly did. What were your musical influences when you formed Blondie and, and started writing songs? What were you basing yourselves on? Well, um, because I was the girl singer and with a band, you know, we had sort of uh, a foothold in sort of the girl group R&B kind of thing. Then, you know, we sort of compounded it all with, you know, different different female artists. Like I used to do some Tina Turner songs. And, uh, you know, then everything just sort of morphed together. You know, we, we copied... Uh, the Rolling Stones, Chris had a great affinity with, you know, Keith and uh, Clem uh, wanted to be Keith Moon and, you know, so on. We we, we pulled it all together, which I, I think created, you know, we're fortunately, we have our own sound. And I, I think that that's one of the, the primary things that bands forget to do is to have their own sound. You know, you have to break a few rules and you have to I don't know, take chances. You have to take a flyer. We took a flyer. Was that the magic that Blondie was? Well, is. I think so. Yeah. You know, it wasn't like a band created behind, you know, one idea. It was a band that included, you know, everyone's testimonial or, or everyone's feeling of what they liked uh, in music. And, and you know, uh, that was really an, an important point of view. Yeah. What about the writing process, Debbie? How did that work for you? Oh, nicely. <laughs> <laughs> Very nicely. <laughs> what, did, what did it look like? Was it you and Chris sitting down together or you tackled stuff by yourself? How did, how did the songs come to you? Well, you know, mostly Chris and I worked together and, you know, he would come up with a, a melody or a song or a rhythm track or something. And, um, you know, sometimes he would have a phrase that he liked to repeat while he was uh, working. Uh, sometimes I would use that free phrase like dreaming is free, you know, was a phrase that he used when he was working on the on the song dreaming. Other times, like, uh, you know, one of the other guys would hand me like Nigel came in with uh, one way or another. And all he had was the but, 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 but. And, you know, I was, you know, just sort of riffing along live and that that was one way or another that it just sort of happened in you know in the rehearsal so you know they happened all different ways it really was you know a, 
uh, a mishmash, you know, because we, we uh, in an odd way, we were competing with each other, but yet we trusted each other because we all had the same ambition. Right. And of course, it, a lot of it depends on the chemistry between band members too. And you all obviously had extremely good chemistry. Well, we had our moments, you know, we had good chemistry and bad chemistry. You know, we, it was like a, almost like a dysfunctional family that occasionally functioned. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's yeah. an exciting thing creating uh, rock and roll and, and uh, especially uh, during our or era of, you know, the new wave or punk, you know, everybody was very, you know, really, really ready to go, you know. What other bands did you admire at the time? Oh, well, I, I was very fond of uh, Richard Hell and, and Johnny Thunders and uh, the Talking Heads and television, Patti Smith, uh, Chrissy Hines. I mean, there were so many, so many wonderful bands, uh, the Pistols, you know, the list is long. Of course, David Bowie and Iggy Pop, you know, broke us to the, uh, you know, the, the U.S. American audiences. So they'll always be my in my heart. I'm sure. I'm sure hobnobbing it with all of those people and being part of that whole musical scene and enjoying such huge success yourself. Was it difficult to keep your feet firmly planted on the ground? Did you? Well, no, I don't think I did. I think it was a. Uh, it was a different industry then, you know, and we didn't have the same uh, availabilities, you know, with the internet and the way to work your product. So a lot of our work was very physical. So it was, uh, you know, it was hard. It's hard but work. It, but in terms of your egos and all the egos around you, did, did everyone get carried away with their success and kind of morph into different beings than you'd started out? Or did you manage to maintain who you were at the outset? We, I think we managed to keep it together for about seven years. I think in uh, most cases that that's that's pretty pretty much it, you know. Um, so I was glad we had that. But then, you know, um, after this long hiatus, you know, Chris said, you know, let's try again, and <laughs> I thought he was crazy. <laughs> but we did it. Yeah, we put it back you did. together. You did. You put the band back together in that classic sense and it worked just as well for you the second time as it had the first time. Were you surprised by that? Well, yeah, you know, older, wiser, you know, it's very true. Uh, and as I said uh, earlier, you know, the industry changed. Part of that change was that, you know, girls were accepted more more seriously. We just sort of hit it right musically. So... Uh, all those all those pieces fit together are you telling me that in the early years you weren't accepted as a female singer out front of that band well i was certainly accepted by the audiences but uh, i think in the industry you know i don't think girls uh, at first were taken seriously and um you know perhaps weren't giving given as much of a push and i'm talking quite quite in the early days because I think things really started to change a lot in the in the 1980s looking back on on your career now would you if you had the chance would you do it all the same way again or are there changes that you'd make <laughs> well you know that story you know that story that you can't you you say oh if, if I go back I'll do it all over again it doesn't happen like that we are who we are so you've I made mean, a few mistakes Oh my God. Yeah. And I do have regrets, although I try not to uh, dwell on it. Do I? I like excitement. I like looking ahead. I like creativity. I like new things. I guess the older I get, the more, you know, sort of settled I become, but I still have, I love, I love new, new, exciting things. I love new fashion. I love new music. I love new movies, you know. So there's still plenty of things left on your bucket list that you'd like to achieve. Well, I suppose, yeah, I'm not going to be jumping from airplanes, but. What does Debbie Harry at, at coming up to 80 years of age still want to get done in life? Gee, I, I don't know. You know, I sometimes think about sculpture. Um, I sometimes think about, you know, writing another hit song. I have some stories to tell, you know. 
You've got plenty of stories to tell. A lot of them you've told in your book, Face It, a memoir, which is a fabulous read. Is there another book in you? I, I hope so. Yeah. I sort of have an idea for a screenplay, which could be fun. Um, I don't know. I'm kind of busy, you know, I'm kind of I'm doing Blondie very, you know, almost full time. I'm, you know, I'm working on a little bit of fashion, a little bit of uh, writing, um, planning to, you know, get over to Australia to play some shows. We tour, we tour every year uh, during the festival season. And occasionally we do uh, special shows. We love to play music. We love to see our audience. Um, you know, we're lucky. We're lucky. So, the, so the Debbie Harry we see on stage doing music is the Debbie Harry that's sitting at home in her lounge room now, one and the same person. <laughs> yes, uh, I might burst into song at any moment. That would, that would be perfectly fine with me. Well, we're very excited to have you coming back to Australia. It's a long haul for you. And uh, I, I would imagine you have to, I mean, I know at my age, you have to pace yourself as you go and, and modify your lifestyle a little bit. You can't keep up the pace that you did in your 20s, 30s, even 40s. Do you succumb to the traditional nana nap too sometimes? Oh, I've always been a napper, actually. I think naps are really great. And I've always done that. I, you know, I can I can just tell myself, okay, got 20 minutes close your eyes. And um, I don't know, I have an automatic alarm clock that always, you know, gets me up. Um, but I, I, you know, I'm very excited to be, you know, on the bill with all of these great bands and all these great artists. It's, it's really, really wonderful. Got my list. There's the list. Fantastic. You, you're the headliner of, of the list and deservedly so. Debbie, what do you do just finally? I know I have to get off the line from you, but what do you do to keep so well and healthy? You obviously look after your diet and, and you know, you'd, I'm imagining that you'd work out as well. Could you just fill us in on your your regime so that other women who would like, who would like to follow in your footsteps can? I don't know if they should actually. Um, <laughs> I'm not a hardliner. I don't tend to eat a lot of red meat, but occasionally I need it or feel like I need it. I think uh, I tend to uh, eat, you know, more veg vegetarian sort of, but uh, I love salads too. I love seafood. And what about exercise? What do you do to keep yourself fit? I run up and down the stairs. Do you? <laughs> yeah, I'm busy. I just have a lot to do, so I I try to keep busy. Um, I used to train seriously for many years, and uh, now I I sort of prefer to you know do my own thing. But I think stretching is very good too. And just final question: How does Debbie Harry handle the aging process? I mean, for for a lot of women, it's really tough, but it would be particularly tough for somebody that's out there in the public view all the time. Oh, it's, it's, uh, it's horrifying actually, you know, but as I said, you know, we always have a certain part of our brain that, you know, thinks of, think, you know, we think of ourselves as being 25 and, um, you know, it's frustrating that, you know, I can't do the things that I did when I was 25, but having that little kernel of, you know, you know feeling 25 mentally, I think is really important. And trying to trying to hold on to that uh, is really a key factor. And then, and you know, life can be very hard. You know, very very disappointing and and harsh and frightening and all of those things. You know, women are usually at the mercy of a lot of elements that you know men men don't suffer from. You know, it, I have my up days and my down days, and fortunately. Um, you know, I have a lot of a lot of things to be thankful for. So many people generally look to you as such an inspiration. So any little piece of advice that you could put out that people could hang off? I don't I don't really have advice. You know, I struggle. I struggle myself. Right. But I like yeah. to, I like to kick the shit out of it, you know. <laughs>